Hey everyone, now I'll go over some of the more advanced techniques you can use in multi-prompting. If you haven't seen the beginner tutorial, I suggest you watch that first, and then come back to this lesson. And if you're having trouble remembering multi-prompting or some of the other things you can do in mid-journey, I've made a free PDF cheat sheet just for you. You can download it in the description below and keep it by you just to remind you of all the possibilities that come with mid-journey. Okay, some more advanced techniques or advanced ways of thinking about multi-prompting. We saw what it could do with a simple prompt, but I think multi-prompting or changing the recipe of a prompt will make more sense the longer your prompt grows. Here's an example from the menu, a dog made of stained glass digital illustration. I think these are pretty beautiful, but it comes with two distinct styles. Now multi-prompting is gonna come in handy when you want to adjust the weight of each of these styles. So you saw how it looked on the menu. Here it is in the recipe form. A dog, colon, colon, made of stained glass, colon, colon, digital illustration. Where now the entire prompt is made up of 33% of each of these. One third dog, which shows up. One third stained glass, which shows up in one and four. And I'd say even number two. And then digital illustration, one third. I think that's quite clear in all of them actually. You see how none of them look real? It's because digital illustration is a part of each of them. Here are just some examples. A dog, 1.5, stained glass, 2, digital illustration, blank, which is 1, which means a dog is slightly more important than it being a digital illustration, and stained glass is twice as important as being an illustration and just a little more important than it being a dog. Are you with me here? And I think it's pretty clear from these pictures that it's divided up into what you'd think stained glass would look like. Where here we have kind of the opposite, a dog 1.5, stained glass 1, digital illustration 2. These are much more of a digital illustration than they are a stained glass for sure. However, you can still see hints of the stained glass, especially in number three. And here's an example of the weights. When you say a dog 0.5, but you give a weight of two to stained glass and a weight of three to illustration, you're not only saying that the styles are more important than the subject, you're actively saying that the subject it's really not that important. And therefore you do not get a dog. Digital illustration is over three times as important than dog, six times as important actually. And it being stained glass is four times as important as the dog, while illustration is just more important than stained glass. So you can clearly see the stained glass be a part of these pictures, but the illustration aspect of it is the most important. I hope that's kind of clear, and I hope it doesn't overwhelm you with just how many possibilities you actually have, because you can just imagine a way longer prompt with different weights and changing those weights and getting different generations every time. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Chills, man. Not only do you have access to your entire imagination in mid-journey? You have access to how important each part of your imagination is. That's superhuman. Now we're going to extend that prompt a little bit and I'm going to show you what else multi-prompting can do. A dog made of stained glass, digital illustration, but now we're adding vibrant neon colors with a weight of two. And if you can't already tell, multi-prompting works really well with accents and detail. I don't consider the subject or the style to be an accent or a detail those are kind of the main ingredients but when it comes to specific things like colors or maybe big eyes you can really adjust those with multi-prompt so i say vibrant neon is twice as important and you get some vibrant neon here over a digitally illustrated dog divided into what looks like a stained glass kind of style in number four at least and the longer your prompt goes the harder it is for mid journey to get every detail right or at at least the harder it is for mid journey to showcase the importance of each part like maybe i didn't think stained glass came through enough so we change it to dog 1.1 stained glass 1.9 digital illustration 1.3 vibrant neon 2 and we get two clear pictures of stained glass stained glass is now more important but it's not exactly what we were looking for like those are kind of ugly it's not a dog and that just goes to show you multi-prompting isn't easy it's not easy to get the specific recipe correct I'm just showing you that it's worth trying because you might be able to find the perfect recipe. Here's the prompt with digital illustration.
illustration at 1.9 and stained glass at 1.5 and like look how good number four is i know we don't have a dog in two or three but i think i might make number four the thumbnail i just find that so beautiful i don't know it's kind of stunning what do you think now i mentioned that multi-prompting was good for details or accents and what i really meant by that is that you can take away details using negative prompting in the multi-prompt in the multiverse like vibrant neon colors are going to give you a specific color palette but let's say you didn't want any pink in your generation so you can write out your prompt then at the end write the color you're trying to isolate and give it a negative weight here i went with negative 0.8 and just for the record you don't need to include a zero you can just include the decimal 0.8 negative 0.8 same thing. And I think these turned out okay, but there's still pink involved. So you might think, oh, we'll just add a higher negative value. And here's the next important lesson. The sum of all the prompt weights must be positive. You could not write negative 10 because negative 10 is much more than 1.1, 1.9, 1.3, .1 and two. Whatever positive weights you have in your prompt needs to outweigh any negative weights you use which means that any accents or details you try to decrease just nudge them away from your prompt anything less than one and you should be okay but here because i knew that i already had neon colors at two and some extra weights i knew i had a little room to maneuver so i went with minus two for pink and i think number one and number two really did what i was asking for there's no pink there yes there's a little in number three and a little in number four i think i've said that it's not an exact science and i really mean that also you never know what a re-roll can do just because your first four pictures don't make what you're looking for doesn't mean the next four aren't going to be perfect so keep that in mind but i would say i'm pretty happy with this generation however you could take it a step farther in this next prompt i put pink at minus three and i also added purple at minus three that's minus six but all of the positive numbers come out to 6.3 which means we're okay and i don't know if you see what i see but there are no pink or purple in these generations you can get really specific with the details you want your prompt to ignore now i don't know how many people are going to be using that because i think most people just want to see what mid journey can come up with rather than trying to specifically create something they see in their heads however if you have something you want to make and you know what it looks like multi-prompting might be the way to get you there and let's say you have isolated the colors that you don't want but you want to emphasize the remaining colors you can do that but you got to be a little careful. So let's just say I said green minus two, blue minus two, yellow minus two, but I really wanted red, purple, and pink. So I'll add plus two to those. This is what you get. And sure, it's got the color palette down. These are vibrant neon, pinks, reds, and purples. However, there's no more dog, which means that you might want to adjust the weight of a dog until you get what you're looking for, as well as potentially decrease the weights that you just tried. So here I went with the dog 3.1, and then I bumped down the weights of what I was looking for to 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and 0.8, and I kept the negatives at minus two. These aren't perfect. I'm still seeing some yellow and blue, which is not what I was hoping for, but perhaps I made the dog too strong with the weight of three. You really got to experiment like a chef in the kitchen. There are two more things you can do to really master multi prompts. The first is called the slider method. And I'd like to say thank you to Clarinet for posting this on Discord. It basically involves taking a regular prompt, pinpointing the part of the prompt that isn't showing up and adding that as a multi-prompt with a small weight to kind of nudge it in the right direction. So I tried the prompt, a man in a white suit driving a car, a white tiger growls in the backseat, leather interior, vintage car, movie still. And I think these look okay, but they're not exactly what I had pictured. So let's try the slider method. Same prompt, but then we're gonna add two colons and then we're going to repeat a part of the prompt. A white tiger growls in the back seat. 0.5. Again, these aren't exactly what I wanted, but I hope you see this technique as something you can use to course correct towards what you're looking for. I changed up the prompt just a little bit. I now worded it like this with a white tiger growling in the backseat. And I gave the slider a weight of 0.7. And these are starting to look a little more impressive. I like number two. Number one's not even that bad. And I really like number four. I think that's kind of what I wanted. I mean, it's not perfect. I strongly suggest hitting re-roll on most of your multi-prompts because they're going to give you some different looks. Still not quite where you're looking for. That's okay. So you can reword the prompt a little more. A white tiger sitting behind him, multi-prompted with a white tiger sitting behind him, 0.7. I think number one is much more accurate to what I was looking for. Still not quite there though. 
Here's a reroll. We have the white tiger growling in the back seat, and then we use the slider method to add a weight of 0.7. I think number two is basically what I want, but if it's not perfect, that's okay. I want you to hit the variation button. The variations might give you enough of a difference to really find what you're looking for. And here I went back to 0.5, and again, I think number four is what I had in my mind. Here are the variations. <laughs> I think number four is pretty great. Ooh, and even the eyes of number one. Yeah, maybe number one's my favorite. And that was just with a low weight. Look at this. We add a weight of 1.1 to the tiger growling in the back seat. And like, look at number four. That's so funny. And even number two, because that looks real. That looks like a guy who is terrified of this white tiger in his car. Hilarious. And the last thing I want you to do while you're trying to master multi-prompting is to consider using chaos and definitely consider using a stylized value. Like here, a samurai ninja holding a katana surveying a city at night from the rooftops, yellow robe, rainfall, unsplash. Right away, I noticed that the katana isn't necessarily present and to be honest, mid journey's not great with that weapon, but also the rainfall isn't quite there. So we're gonna use the slider method and add a weight of 0.8 to rainfall, as well as holding a katana 0.8. Sure enough, we get a lot of rainfall and the katana is showing up, so that's important. But look, we're gonna add a stylized value of 1000 and we get the lots of rainfall, but the katana's not quite there. And look at how just different your generation can be when you add a chaos value of just 14. Super different. And in number two, I like that his katana is kind of his umbrella, but maybe the stylized value took a little bit away from the prompt so we could lower it here to S800. And in number three and number four, we're getting that rooftop look back. However, maybe I wanted more rooftop. So then we're going to slide from the rooftops and we're going to add a weight of 0.5. Now our ninja is back on top of the roof. I'm going to hit reroll because I want to see what else this can do and then I get something like number three here and that's pretty accurate to what I want however if I was picky I would probably slide yellow robe and add a weight to it because I don't think the color is there now I haven't done that but I want to show you that even a low chaos value of four mixed with a little bit of stylized 200 you can get some cool pictures I'm afraid that finding exactly what I was looking for would have required a lot more experimentation. And to be honest, I don't have the fast hours to try that right now. However, I wanted to show you the path I would take to get the pictures I wanted, which includes using these techniques for multi-prompting. Let me know if I've missed anything and let me know how these have helped you. I hope you're doing well. Take care and I'll see you next time. Peace.